Pro Peloton is reportedly buzzing about a new way to get huge performance gains, and it isn't banned by WADA yet. And interestingly, you probably already have this substance in your pantry. Isn't that just baking soda? Yes. Do you have to eat it? Also, yes. But will it make you faster? Well, here at Trainer Row, we dug into the science so you don't have to. Let's get started. Sodium bicarbonate or baking soda has long been claimed to enhance athletic performance. And here's how it works. As exercise intensity increases, our muscles produce more lactate and that goes into our bloodstream. Kind of like a car that is running at a higher RPM will produce more exhaust into the air. But the cool part about our bodies is that we can actually use our own exhaust as fuel and lactate just happens to be a super fuel. Here's the catch. The mathematical equation that takes place every time our body reprocesses lactate as fuel has a pesky remaining remainder to it, and that remainder is hydrogen. As the presence of hydrogen increases in our blood, that creates an increasingly acidic environment. And that has proven to impair muscle activity. Assuming this is what causes the burn and impairs performance, it would be pretty sweet if we could reduce the amount of hydrogen in our blood, right? Enter sodium bicarbonate. When sodium bicarbonate is in our bloodstream, it can effectively absorb some of that hydrogen, reducing the acidity in our bloodstream and ostensibly reducing muscle burn, allowing us to pedal harder for longer periods of time. But here's the rub. Getting sodium bicarbonate into your bloodstream is harder than you might think. Traditionally, this has been done by ingesting roughly 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in baking soda. So how much baking soda is that? If you're 150 pounds or 68 kilograms, that's two teaspoons. And you're supposed to ingest that one to two hours prior to exercise. And whether you mix it in with a liquid or just spoon it in, it causes extremely inconvenient and uncomfortable side effects including thirst, bloating, nausea, diarrhea, and even potential vomiting. Now, in the name of science, I tried this and let me tell you, it is a terrible way to prepare for a race. But then again, I have a sensitive little gut, so maybe it's just me. If you've tried this before, let me know down in the comments. So now we have to ask ourselves, is the potential decrease in muscle burn worth all of that discomfort? Let's go to science for the answer. In a 2021 study called Sodium Bicarbonate Improved Sprint Performance in Endurance Cycling, Sebastian Dahl and colleagues had 11 trained male cyclists do a three hour simulated cycling race followed by a 90 second all out sprint. They measured a lot of things, including heart rate, power output, and blood acidity. They had the participants do this two separate times, giving them either a sodium chloride placebo pill or the 300 milligram per kilogram of body weight sodium bicarbonate pill. What did they find? Bicarbonate lowered blood acidity and improved power output in the 90 second sprint by 3%. Interestingly, and this is important, there wasn't a statistically significant difference in RPE, even though power and heart rate increased in the bicarbonate tests. But if we zoom out from a single study and look at a systematic review from Hodzig and colleagues in 2019, we start to see a different story. They looked at 775 randomized controlled trials and 35 of those met their criteria. Based on these 35 studies, only half of them showed performance improvement after using bicarbonate. And what's more, looking closer at some of the individual studies in this review, it's not uncommon to see non-responders and even adverse responders, meaning it could make you slower. And not that this is any sort of scientific study, but in our own experimentation with three separate subjects here at Trainer Road HQ, we also got mixed results. And speaking of that, if you can guess the highest lactate reading in those tests, I'll send you a free Trainer Road swag pack. Guess down below in the comments. So why the conflicting results? To be honest, research hasn't really told us why yet, but the current focus seems to be on the method of administration. Swallowing a bunch of baking soda, even if it's mixed in with a drink, is super uncomfortable and can hurt performance. And although swallowing pills instead of powder can make the ingestion part easier, it still doesn't change the fact that it's really hard to digest. Topical creams have existed for some time now, but the current research doesn't show promising results for it. And Martin has a new product that claims to use their hydrogel technology to reduce the digestive issues. And although early signs from ongoing research are promising, we don't have a significant body of independently published research that shows this as of now. So what does all of this mean for us cyclists that wanna get faster? Here's what you need to know. Number one, in studies where sodium bicarbonate has improved performance, it's when it is paired with high intensity exercise. And that makes logical sense with how it buffers lactate, but it's important to keep in mind. If you're doing longer events that don't have a lot of high intensity efforts in them, it's not likely to give you a meaningful benefit. Number two, based on currently published research, the general consensus seems to indicate that sodium bicarbonate's benefits likely will not last to the end of long events, particularly if those events have a lot of high intensity efforts early on. In other words, if you're doing something super long like an Ironman or something that even though 
though it's long, it starts really hard, like unbound gravel, it's not likely to help you with those hard efforts later on in the race. And number three, despite some of the articles that are out there, when it has improved performance, it's been on the level of two to 3%. So this is more in line with a marginal gain instead of a massive one. Putting this all together, it stands to reason that this could be worth trying out, particularly if you're doing high intensity races or training. So if you want to try it, what should you do? Research suggests taking in 200 to 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in bicarbonate. Putting that in context, if you weigh 68 kilograms or 150 pounds and you buy those 650 milligrams sodium bicarbonate pills, you would have to take an astounding 31 pills. Or you could just go wild with the powder. And remember, it's recommended to do this one and a half hours before exercise. And I think it's a good idea to experiment with these different ingestion methods on low consequence days so you don't spend your precious training time in the bathroom instead of getting faster on the bike. But taking a step back from all of this, we have to consider the cost. If you go with bicarbonate pills, you don't have to worry about mixing it into a bottle, but you're still likely to experience enough gut distress that you probably won't want to try it again. But at least that would be on par with the cost of gels at about $5 per serving. Because if you go with a more expensive option from Marten to hopefully alleviate some of that gut distress, that is a whopping $19 per serving after tax and shipping. If your weekly training schedule has two days of intense training and maybe a race, that's going to cost you as much as $230 per month. That is 11 times more expensive than a monthly trainer row membership, which gives you high quality training driven by AI that on average gives you far more performance improvement than just two to 3%. And best of all, it doesn't even taste bad. And with that, if you haven't gone to trainerroad.com and signed up yet, you're missing out. We've got a ton of exciting improvements coming like always, and people in over 150 countries around the world getting faster with it every day. If you haven't yet, leave a comment down below letting me know if you'd be willing to try bicarbonate, which method of administration you prefer, and how much you'd be willing to pay for it. That's it for this week. See y'all next time.